Oh, this time of year, I crave comfort foods, and one of my fall favorites is a croque monsieur ham and cheese bake. Ooh, think melting and gooey and rich, just super comforting. Essentially, what it is, is a savory bread pudding. So I'm using the same principles of a sweet bread pudding, applying it to this recipe. So to get started, first I need to melt some butter, a quarter cup. And why just use plain butter when I can make garlic butter? So let me grate a clove of garlic into the pot, and I'll just get that on the stove melting. While the garlic butter is melting, I'll cut two tablespoons of butter. I need to set that aside for when I make the bechamel sauce. This ham and cheese bake is inspired by the French Cafe Croque Monsieur sandwich, which is a toasted ham and cheese sandwich topped with a bechamel sauce. That's a white sauce. And then, of course, cheese is melted on top of it. So decadent and rich. I'll make the bechamel in a bit, but now my garlic butter is ready. So I can brush this inside my baking dish. You need a large one. This is a 9 by 13 baking dish. And this bake goes from oven to table. So something like a porcelain or ceramic dish works great. There we go. Now I have some leftover garlic butter, so I'll use that in a bit to base my bread. But first I need to get the ham and cheese filling ready. I'll start by grating a combination of cheddar and Gruyere cheese. I like using old cheddar for its bite, but I also like using Gruyere cheese because it turns really stretchy and smooth. That combination is perfect. I'll give the cheeses a bit of a stir to combine them. I'm just gonna take out one cup to set aside to top the bake later on. Now I'll add some diced ham. What I have here is thickly sliced black forest ham that I then diced up. You could use leftover roasted ham. It's a perfect use for leftovers. And then what's a ham and cheese sandwich without mustard? That's a nice little texture. And I'll stir this to combine. Okay, and now the next step is, well, to make some sandwiches. I've got 12 slices of day old French bread and I'll just lay them out. And don't forget about that garlic butter that you have left. I'll brush that on top of each piece of bread. And then use up all of that ham and cheese mixture. I know it's a lot, but that cheese will melt down. But just pack it on to six slices of this bread. Now I'll top with the other slices of bread. There we go. I have a pile of sandwiches. So this is the base for the bake. I'll take my dish and then just line up those sandwiches. It depends on the size of your pan, how you may need to reconfigure them. You could even cut the sandwiches in half if you wanted to. I see these nestle in nicely. Now for the bread pudding portion, actually making a custard base. Uh, sometimes it's called a royale and it's simply a combination of whole eggs, milk and half and half cream. So I'll break my four eggs into the bowl. And I always like to whisk my eggs first before I add the milk. It just makes it easier and quicker to combine later on. Now my milk. I need two and a half cups. And as if this bake isn't rich enough, a little half and half cream. A cup. I'll add my salt and pepper and give this a whisk. Okay, now to pour this custard base over the sandwiches. Okay. Now you'll notice the sandwiches sit higher than the custard, but that's part of the joy of this bake. Like a good croque monsieur sandwich that's toasty on the bottom, but kind of soft and creamy on top, this is actually the reverse. You'll get that fluffy bread pudding texture underneath with the melted cheese and ham, but then the tops of the sandwiches will toast up perfectly. This is all set for the oven. I've preheated my oven to 350 and I'll bake this for 45 minutes. At that point, that's when I add the bechamel sauce and the finishing cheese. This ham and cheese bake definitely feeds a crowd. And if you wanna serve it for a weekend brunch, 
What you can do is fully assemble it, even put on the custard, store it in the fridge overnight. Then all you have to do is pull it out in the morning and bake it. But you will have to add an extra 15 to 25 minutes of bake time because of course everything is cold from the fridge. A bechamel is a basic white sauce. It's actually the first sauce that my mom taught me how to make. It starts by making a roux, so a combination of butter and flour cooked together. So first I'll melt the butter, and then I add the flour. I've got my pot on medium heat, and you want to constantly stir the roux. It takes about three minutes to cook, and visually the roux won't change at all, but you really have to use your sense of smell here. When you smell lightly toasted almonds, then you know the flour has been cooked out. Now it's time to add the milk, one cup of milk. And you want to whisk this in a little at a time at first. Once it's all been added, you can add nutmeg and salt and pepper. And still on medium heat, you want to keep whisking this until you see bubbles break the surface. By that time, the sauce will have thickened. Now I can take the sauce off the heat until it's time to put it on the croque monsieur bake. Ooh, look at this. After the 45 minutes, you can see how the top of the sandwiches have toasted. And you may find that the bread pudding portion has set on the outside. And if it's still a little soft or liquidy in the center, don't worry. This bake is going to spend another 15 minutes in the oven. Now it's time to pour on the bechamel. If the bechamel has cooled, you can rewarm it to make it fluid and then pour this on top of those bread slices. Ooh. And now for that one cup of cheese that I set aside, sprinkle that right on top. And still in a 350 oven, you want to give this another 15 minutes. Let the sauce bubble around the edges and make sure that cheese on top is nice and melted. This really does have the look of a croque monsieur. Look at that bubbling happen. And the bechamel kind of souffles a bit in the oven. Just so creamy, yet it's got that toastiness. Oh, no wonder this is a favorite comfort food of mine. I'm just gonna go for a whole sandwich portion. If I've got a comfort food craving, there is no stopping me. We've got the softness from that custard. The cheese has melted within it. I've got the pieces of diced ham. I can smell that hint of garlic, but really for me what makes it is that bechamel on top. So creamy and decadent, I'm actually salivating, sorry. Wow, what an absolute treat. How can you resist that combination of melted cheese and ham and the bechamel on top? Truly, this is a fall favorite comfort food of mine, and I hope it becomes one of yours too. Mmm. Mmm.